Uruguay in many ways resembles a European destination rather than a South American one, is largely unknown among potential North American expats and you won't find many of them living here. But recently in the past few years, more and more North Americans are beginning to take a closer look at Uruguay. Would Uruguay be your retirement destination? Hello everyone, this is Ronan Blue and if you're new to this channel, welcome. This channel is all about how my girlfriend and I achieved financial independence and debt freedom three years back since paying off our mortgage. With my newfound freedom, I talk about how we made it happen, the types of passive income we have that anyone could implement, our thoughts on early retirement overseas, personal thoughts and general financial issues. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our weekly content full of information helping you get the financial independence yourself. Today's topic would be on the 8 best reasons to retire to Uruguay. Just as a disclaimer, the information provided is a general guide and to be used for educational purposes only. Now Uruguay truly has a lifestyle and a region for everyone depending on what you're looking for in a way of a new life abroad. Let's look at some more points coming now. Number 1. Culture in Uruguay Uruguay is on the southeastern Atlantic coast bordering Argentina to the west and south and Brazil to the north. The land area is about 68,000 square miles or 176,220 kilometers. The total population is about 3.7 million and about half the population lives in the capital Montevideo, which has a vibrant blend of the old and new and it draws many expats who love the city life. The population is 90% European, predominantly Spanish and Italian, and 6% of the people are partly of Native American descent and Africans are 4% of the population. Uruguay is a diverse country and has a variety of cultures, foods, religions, arts and sports, a combination of which makes them the country that they are today. They are known to be warm, welcoming and friendly. For greetings of close friends and sometimes new acquaintances, they hug and kiss on the cheek and personal space is often much closer than in the US. The majority of the population identifies as Christian, but just over 40% of the population of this country claims to have no religious identity. The most popular sport in Uruguay and the rest of Latin America is soccer. This country participated in the Olympic Games, winning the gold for soccer in 1924 and 1928. The first World Cup championship game was held in Uruguay, who took home first place. They also have a tradition where neighbors bring chairs out from their houses onto the streets to watch different street shows that happen during carnivals. This is where they dance and drink together and play Turco, an amusing card game. Number 2. Places to live in Uruguay there are many reasons to consider Uruguay as a retirement destination. Uruguay is a small country, and although it is a small country, it's located in the fertile plains and hills south of Brazil and east of Argentina, and has a coast along the Atlantic Ocean in the Rio de la Plata. But let's look at some of the spots that are popular. Montevideo. This is where about half the population of Uruguay lives, and most of the expats also live in the capital city of Montevideo. There are about 1.5 million people. It's been recently rated as a South American city with the highest quality of life by the Mercer Quality of Living Survey. It has a number of high-end multi-story shopping malls, trendy restaurants, and the country's major hospitals. It also has a multicultural heritage with a deep appreciation for a diverse range of culture and arts. Montevideo is seen as the city of the world with art museums, ballet, theaters, music halls and more. It also has walkways along the waterfront that has parks, bike paths and outdoor exercise, pavilions, restaurants and more. It actually winds its way around the city so it's very convenient. Punta Caretas this place is on the southernmost point in Montevideo and is probably the most attractive in the city but also one of the more expensive. The apartments here are always in competition to get near golf courses and major shopping malls and grocery stores. It's also popular for its central location with good transportation. Punta de Aste this area has a strip of high rises that jut out into the Atlantic and is full of single family homes. There's approximately 12,000 full time residents. There's also a variety of architectural styles that reflects the diversity of European cultures that make up Uruguay's population. High rise condos line the streets and make it look like Miami. There are also two large white sand beaches that aren't that super calm, but you'll find plenty of shopping, restaurants, casinos and nightlife. The food is fresh here, the air and water are clean, it's beautiful, the beaches are wonderful, the people are welcoming and you can live as if you were in Europe. There are also surrounding beach towns east of Punta del Este that are slowly attracting small expat communities. But if you're not interested in the higher priced high rise lifestyles, there are of course more affordable options around as well. If you're into the beach life, the beaches of Uruguay extend along the entire length of its coastline. Number 3. Food in Uruguay Chivino 
This is South America's greatest sandwich and is considered to be the Uruguayan national dish. It's a loaded beef sandwich piled high with various vegetables and thin beef slices. The slices of beef in the sandwich are thinner than the average American steak and are piled onto a burger bun with mozzarella, tomatoes, mayonnaise, olives, and bacon. It's also served with a large portion of fries at the side. Tortas fritas. These are biscuit bread snacks. A torta frita is a fried bread, sometimes served with a pinch of sugar on top. They are little big dough cakes enjoyed on a rainy day. They are quick snacks sold by street vendors or at certain restaurants. Asado. This is the traditional Uruguayan meat barbecues and barbecues are known to be best served in South America. Uruguayans are all about the family and asado is one of the favorite dishes that reflects the community spirit. It's shared out in the backyard with family and friends and the person who prepares the meat is called the asador. And he or she typically begins by seasoning the meats with some salt. They will cook up ribs, steak, chicken, pork and lamb in a massive meat feast. Number 4. Things to do in Uruguay this small South American country is known for its wide open beaches, fishing villages, Atlantic coastal wildlife, sea lions, seals, penguins, and offshore whales. Plus its gaucho culture with big skies, cattle ranches, and skilled horsemen. It's a great place for retirees. While the country boasts a stable economy, mild climate, affordable healthcare, friendly locals, and well-developed infrastructure. Even at night, there is dining, tango classes, theater, and various nightclubs. It's known as one of the safest countries in the continent, and there are many fascinating places to explore, such as colonial era centers, wide range of historic and cultural landmarks. There are also beautiful beaches that border the Atlantic Ocean and interior stunning nature reserves. Let's look at a few places. Santa Teresa National. Nature lovers will love the diverse array of landscapes, ecosystems, and fauna and flora. Most of the park is made up of forests and seaside areas, and there are great hiking trails that cut through the dunes and woods. One of the major historical sites here is the Fortress of Santa Teresa, which dates all the way back to 1762. Colonia del Sacramento. This is one of the oldest cities in Uruguay and wonderful colonial architecture with old cobble streets everywhere you look. Having been ruled at various times by the Spanish and Portuguese who fought over it, there is an interesting mix of architectural styles. Cost of living in Uruguay. So how much does it cost to live in Uruguay? Well it depends on a number of factors such as where you want to live, your lifestyle and the performance of the dollar. Some things in Uruguay are more expensive but the overall expense of day to day life are a little lower than in the US. According to Numbio for example, grocery prices average 39.51% lower in Uruguay than in Los Angeles. Meals in a restaurant are slightly lower, but the big savings is in rentals where Uruguay's prices are almost 78% of that of properties in Los Angeles. It's possible for a couple to live in Montevideo with good health care on $2,000 a month, especially when you can do without a car. The majority of people living in Montevideo do not own a car. When they need to go beyond their own neighborhood, they take the bus or a taxi. An apartment one bedroom in city center would be $374 between $320 and $481 USD per month. An apartment one bedroom outside the city center would be $303 between $240 and $401 USD per month. An apartment three bedrooms in city center would be $819 between $588 dollars and one thousand sixty nine dollars USD per month. An apartment three bedrooms outside the city center would be seven hundred and eighty four dollars between four hundred and eighty one dollars and one thousand two hundred and three dollars USD per month. A meal in an inexpensive restaurant would be fourteen dollars and seventy cents between eight dollars and sixteen dollars USD. A meal for two people in a mid-range restaurant for a three-course meal would be $40 between $21 and $48 USD. Basic utilities for an apartment would be $104 between $66 and $187 USD per month. The internet would be $30 between $26 and $40 USD per month. Uruguay isn't the most affordable retirement destination in Latin America, but of course the numbers can vary depending on where you settle and the lifestyle you adopt. As with any country, Uruguay is home to a wide array of cities, some with a higher cost of living than others. Montevideo, as an example, was ranked as the third most expensive city in Latin America in 2018. Salto is an example that has a much lower cost of living. According to some estimates, a retiree could live in Salto for as little as $800 a month. So the cost of living is much lower in Uruguay's countryside towns and even in the less fashionable beach communities. The low cost of healthcare is perhaps the greatest financial benefit for retiring in Uruguay. 
which I'll talk about in the healthcare section. But overall, the cost of living in Uruguay isn't as low as it used to be because of its development. But there are much more lifestyle opportunities combined with affordable healthcare that add to the value that just might be the ticket. Number six, buy property in Uruguay. Uruguay is known for its stability. It's one of the main reasons why Brazilians, Argentines, and investors from around the world buy property in Uruguay. Non-citizens can own full title to real estate. As a foreign individual, you can buy and hold real estate in your own name. You don't need a local partner, a trust, or a corporation. You don't even need to become a legal resident or get a tax identification number. And you can own any type of real estate, the same as any Uruguay citizen. And that includes property near the coast and agricultural land. But the most popular real estate investment among foreign buyers are the apartments in the capital, Montevideo. The second most popular are apartments and single family homes homes in the beach resort town of Punta del Este. As an example, you can get a one bedroom 430 square foot apartment full of modern features and amenities for $147,000 USD. There are many sites online you can search through for these properties. Number seven, healthcare in Uruguay. Because the country has a national system with absolutely no restrictions, everyone in the country is entitled to quality medical treatment, even foreign residents. The most popular and affordable option is the hospital membership plan called the Multualista. You simply go to your hospital or one of its satellite clinics for all of your care. It covers your doctor visits, tests, treatments, surgeries, emergencies, and hospital stays. Rather than the insurance system, the Multualista is more like a membership club with a particular private clinic or hospital system. The membership fee typically ranges from $100 to $150 a month, and co-pays run around $7. You also get some discounts for medications. Now Uruguay has a public health care system that acts as a safety net for those who can't afford a private health care plan, but most expats choose to go with a mutualista instead. But Uruguay is not a medical tourism destination. Buying medical services individually as a traveler in Uruguay can be quite expensive. Number eight, how to live in Uruguay. The process to become a resident of Uruguay is somewhat unique. Instead of having to go through a consulate outside of Uruguay, you can make your application and complete the residency process within Uruguay after you arrive. There's a government office that deals with immigration and residency matters, and it's where you submit your application with the associated documents. All of the specific required documentation is publicly available visiting their government website or other sites. Too many points to mention here. But for one step, you're required to provide evidence of your financial means of support in an amount that's reasonable to support the number of applicants in your family. Generally, an income of $1,500 per month will suffice for a single applicant. The source and amount of your income must be verified by a Uruguayan legal professional authorized to prepare your income verification certificate. Any source of income from abroad is acceptable, such as a pension, social security, lease income, or business income. But if you'd like, you can stay in the country for 90 days at a time, as often as you like. And for a small fee, a tourist visa can often be renewed for stays of 180 days at a time. After you submit all of your application documentation, recently it takes less than a year for your completed residency application to be processed. As a bonus section, let's talk about the pros and cons for living in Uruguay, starting with the pros. It's said that people in Uruguay tend to be generally happier than people in the US. There's more honest joy and simple pleasures. There's a heart level acceptance in general among people. Uruguay also has a few barriers for people that want to move there. If you're able to support yourself and won't be a burden on the government, you can pretty much move there. Expats in particular are drawn to the coastal options that Uruguay offers, but there are many great places to live in Uruguay. And also keep in mind that the summer in Uruguay is also flipped for expats moving from the northern hemisphere. So if you're planning to live in Uruguay for the South American summer months, late December to late March is perfect for you. The infrastructure in Uruguay is modern as well. The country has modern modern highways, reliable cell phone, broadband internet coverage, and drinkable water from all taps in the country. The traffic is also minimal, public transportation is cheap, convenient, and comfortable, and there's even free Wi-Fi in the town squares and buses. You won't find too many places in Latin America with all that. There's also the lowest levels of corruption in all of Latin America, and it's quite an important consideration for those thinking about retiring there, but who are worried about crime rates in South America. Uruguay is also a financially and politically stable democracy with a judicial system and an elected president. The lower crime and poverty rates are also an extra benefit. 
benefit. The number of retirees moving to Uruguay in the last decade or so has grown. The country receives hundreds of new arrivals from the US each year. There's a thriving expat community in Montevideo, as well as in the beach towns to the east. That's great news for retirees since it means that there are all kinds of events and support groups for expats. Now let's talk about the cons. Jobs are not readily available in Uruguay, so don't plan to move there and then find work if you need a steady income stream to survive. And expats who want to rely solely upon their native English will find Uruguay a difficult place to live. But if you're bilingual, it could be hard as well because of Spanglish. Many may still not be able to understand it. There are also scorpions in Uruguay up north, small dark charcoal in color, about one and a half inches long, usually in the soil but are small enough to come inside if they find an opening. They can sting mildly but they're not deadly. You also find that most all of the stores are closed during the holidays. You'll find signs of government run tourist information centers that say closed for tourism week. But this just means that the people would rather spend time with their family and friends than make a bit of extra money for working a holiday, but it may be frustrating for some. But other than the points just mentioned, overall Uruguay is a popular retirement destination. Its culture is rich, it has a stable economy, mild climate, stunning South Atlantic Ocean beaches, affordable healthcare, safe drinking water, low taxes, and very little crime. Although it's not among the world's most luxurious retirement destinations, this desirable country does have a higher cost of living than many of the other Latin American countries. The great thing that makes Uruguay stand out from other popular Latin American retirement destinations such as Panama and Ecuador is that it's not overrun with expats. If you plan to retire to Uruguay, you obviously want to feel like you're living in Latin America and not in the United States or Europe. Uruguay has a good balance. The expat community is decent, but still relatively small. Well, tell me what you think of Uruguay in the comment section below. If you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell for more of my coming content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. Be free, gain wealth, and travel far.